Hey guys, Patriot coming to you from the beautiful Arizona Anyhow, desert. What we're out here doing today is just doing a little bit of glassing with the binoculars, a little photography, a little video, and uh, a little bit of shed hunting in between. Now out here in the desert southwest especially, the distances are so vast and you can literally see dozens of miles, sometimes a lot more. I'm looking at a uh, mountain back behind me over here, or in front of me, behind you, that's about 40 miles away by the way the crow flies. I find that binoculars are an indispensable tool out here. As human beings, our sight is so limited. Now I've long considered the 8x32 the ideal size for daytime hiking. Now when we're out exploring, walking around, hiking, just viewing things, typically we're going to be looking or viewing through our binoculars offhand. And that's the other reason that I recommend either a 7 or an 8 power binocular. Because the increase in magnification, although it does allow more resolution, it also creates a lot more shape. Now obviously when it comes to binoculars, there's going to be dozens of different approaches as far as which technique is best to use. But uh, I thought that I'd share a couple with you that work for me personally. The first one is the bracket or the cradle technique. And that's where I take a couple of fingers, put it over, over the top of the roofs, and then I just kind of let my fingers naturally relax or support the glass underneath like this. Now my thumbs are going to be back here by the ocular. So what this allows me to do is look through the binocular with a minimum amount of hand and wrist tension. About the only place where there's any tension is up at the top of my shoulders. But that's what we want. We want to get all of the small muscle control out of the picture when it comes to holding our binoculars. These large muscles up here in the shoulders are much steadier and vibrate much less than all the small muscles, these fast twitch muscles in our hands. Now today I'm carrying a big tripod with me and I usually am. Normally my camera is mounted at the end of my tripod and I've got the binoculars around my neck. So a variation that I'll use of the conventional offhand hold that adds a little bit of steadiness, a little bit of stability to the offhand method is that I'll take my tripod here and put my arm over the top of it or sometimes even right through the legs here. And when I hold my binoculars this the way, the weight acts as a stabilizer because this resists small movement and only allows large movements. Now this is a fairly heavy tripod, uh, weighs in at about eight pounds uh, as you see it right so now. So when I'm up here looking through the glass like this, this heavy tripod absorbs a lot of that movement and provides a remarkably steady view for offhand. I would say it's probably twice as stable as looking through the binoculars without the tripod. So it's a very good technique. Now if I don't need a perfectly steady view, this works really well and it's a lot quicker than taking my tripod down like this, adjusting the height, and mounting my binocular on the tripod itself. If I can avoid that while I'm traveling, while I'm walking, I will. And just to show what that looks like from the other angle. It's a really outstanding method. It's uh, about as close to a view off of a tripod as you'll ever get from a standing position. Now another common method that I use depending on the terrain that I'm in is going to be the rested method or if you can park yourself alongside of something. And all you're trying to do is get a shoulder and a hand or at the very minimum just a hand up alongside something solid so that it can minimize the shake. So when you look through your optic your hands aren't holding tension on the they optic. They act as more of just like an, a, a mouse an untensioned cradle. And then that is supported against the immovable or resistant object like the tree. Now for more support and, and if the object even offers you the chance, you can go to a, a two-handed or a double rest, something like this. Now, in the interest of being practical and realistic, uh, I had to look around Out for this tree. Out here in the desert, well, there's not too many things that you can get close to. You know, everything is pretty bushy, so you're not going to get up against a solid, immovable object. And uh, as far as a saguaro cactus goes, forget that. You don't want to nestle up against one of those guys. 
So limited application in the desert, but it is and possible. And you may be able to utilize that uh, depending on the uh, terrain that you're in. And when we're out hiking and we're following or we're stalking animals, or maybe we're just bird watching, it's inevitable that you find yourself in the, in the kneeling or squatted position. You, you squat down to duck something or to remain a little bit more still and you get stuck in this. In this. You may be stuck here for a while. Got a big hawk about to fly over me. Big Harris hawk. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Gorgeous. I think his shadow went past me. So what I like to do is uh, typically I use binoculars with the eye cups extended like this. But when I'm down in this position, my back is at an angle, my neck is at a forward angle usually. And because of that, I don't get the proper eye relief and I, I end up having to tilt my head back like this and look through it. Well, that's not comfortable and it's not conducive to a steady hold because you're under a lot of tension. Your arms, your shoulders have to come up higher to meet that. So what I'll do, I'll just leave the eye cups in a lot of times when I'm stocking something. And by leaving the eye cups in, I can just set the top edge of this, of the eye cup, on the top of my brow, like this. I do recommend a strap or a sling with tension on it, just because it offers you a little bit more flexibility. And as you can see here, I've got this set up by one hand, and I can set this up on my brow, and the binocular just sort of sits on top of my fist with one hand. And a little bit closer view of what that looks like. Now lastly, I wanted to look at the seated position and uh, some ways in which you could get the binocular to do what you need it to or to stay steady. Take your pack or your jacket or your clothes, get it under your knees if you can. This will provide you a little bit of stability. I've got a little bit more stability on this side and go ahead and cradle the binocular like we discussed earlier. And again, since I'm leaning forward to balance my weight basically, I actually have to put the binocular off the top of my brow again uh, because of the shape of my face. So I'm going to use it without the eye cups extended. I'll leave those retracted for now. Now this technique may be a little bit difficult to get in the, the cross knees position or the cross legs position, especially for somebody, maybe they've got a little bit bigger belly or whatever, but, uh, but this is very stable. Now you might have a variation on this technique which works with your body structure better, but uh, hopefully this will get you started and give you some ideas of what you can try. Now the final technique that I'll show you, and also the most stable, is the prone position. So if you've got a pack that you can rest on, Go ahead and fluff up that pack, kind of squish it together, get it nice and high, and then get your face right down there. And this will provide a very steady view, steadier than even the seated position. But I could comfortably view for, I would say, at least 15 to 20 minutes or so uh, like this without much fatigue. Again, I have the eye cups retracted, not extended, and that's because I'm not looking straight through it as if I was standing. Because of that, I need a little bit more eye relief off of my brow. Now on the downside, a little bit of light does enter through the sides when the when the eye cups are not extended. But the price but that you pay for stability.